How's it going, boys and girls? It's it's uh it's been a minute, and welcome welcome to another episode of me oversharing way too much about my personal life on the internet. Really, old Dakota ain't doing too well anymore. <laughs> Not that good. And uh, I guess in order to really get, there's a crested gecko just going like. By God, that is distracting. To really understand what's going on, we need to do a little bit of a story time for a little, I guess a couple months back before Project Jungle became a big part of Dakota Blue Exotics. So off this story, we gotta go about, about two months ago, back when we were doing Project Jungle as just a, kind of a YouTube thing, you know? I was picking up some plants from nurseries and putting them in tanks and making cool enclosures. At this point in time, I wasn't, I mean, there was, it was a couple of years where I just wasn't really happy with how things were, how things were done, how things were kept, and just the business as a whole, you know? Because they were kept, it was fine, bare minimum, I, I would say. I know people are like, oh, do you keep, to have excellent care of your animals? I personally don't think so. I didn't think so at the time. I thought I was doing enough for them, but I, excellence and care, amazing care. I don't think that's what we were doing here at that time, and I really came into fruition when I was starting Project Jungle and kind of took a look at all the other enclosures compared to something like that that we were building. That's kind of, that's when, you know, the first Project Jungle as a bioactive expansion of the business kind of came to mind. Now there was definitely, I guess, pushback, I would say. I talked to quite a few people about their thoughts, what they thought of it, and I had a couple of people that were very supportive, very nice, I think. It wasn't just like blatant nicety, you know, where people are just like, yeah, do it, it's gonna be good. It was people that were looking at it through like an analytical point and thinking like, I think this is a good move, I think it works for your brand, uh, blah, blah, blah. However, there was definitely some pushback too. Like, it's a bad idea, dude, you shouldn't do it. Uh, it's not gonna work, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna invest too much money into it, it's gonna fail. Yeah, stuff like that. But um, what really lit the spark into this and kind of brought us down the road that we are now, you know, redoing our, rethinking our entire breeding projects, trying to work towards getting more captive bred populations of more unusual and rare species, stuff that needs to help getting its CB count up instead of just like mass producing animals like every other breeder. Uh, that's not a negative. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying that like we're personally, the, the, the thing that started this, which is where we are now, happened on this day. I don't want to... At the end of the day, man, I'm, I'm not looking to start shit anymore. You know, I, I used to be a little bit of a drama farmer, but these days I just don't really... I don't just... I don't want to... I don't want the confrontation. I just want to do my own thing. So I'm not going to name any names. But one day, hanging around with some people, and I just... I don't think it was people that took me seriously, either as a person or as a business, blah, blah. They thought I was just, like, fucking around. And there was one sentence, man, that triggered it. That was like... What the sentence was, I was on the phone with someone and they were like, oh yeah, Dakota's, Dakota's just hanging out here because, you know, he's unemployed and just makes five dollars off of YouTube. And by God, that just pissed me off to no one. I said, you know what? If I can get this bioactive thing to really work, I'll just do it to show him. Just, it's just the spitefulness of it all. For some added context for the new people here, I'm pretty open about it. But, you know, old Dakota, we have like a borderline personality disorder, and it's just one of those good side effects, symptoms, whatever it's called. Someone just says something like that, man. It's like a like a fucking switch to like friend dead to me. Don't care. And usually I'd put up a big fuss, make a scene, and get angry. I decided that day. You know what? I'm gonna put my head down, I'm gonna get to work, I'm gonna let my work show them instead of my act. I'm, well, wait, no, I'm gonna not let words show them, actions show them. Yeah, there we go. That's what I did. Now we are, now we're here today, man. <laughs> it's exactly what I did. I put my head down for months. I started working behind the scenes, you know, contacting wholesalers, getting deals, contracts, getting pretty much putting everything in motion uh, to make Project Jungle a core thing about of Dakota Blue Exotics. And through that, you know, we went through this transformation of ideology of keeping the standards that animals are being kept when it comes to breeding versus keeping. All in all, how it could benefit reptiles and the hobby in general in a more light than, well, let's be honest, mostly just mass-producing crested geckos like everybody else. <laughs> to, I came to the realization that, especially with someone with that's lucky enough to have a platform, well, not lucky, I work pretty damn fucking hard for this shit. Someone that has a platform like this, I, I should be holding myself to a better standard than every other breeder, you know? And I think I should use this platform in a more 
just in a better way, you know? For a long time, people were coming up to me and be like, oh man, you inspired me to breed crested geckos. And I'm like, fuck man, <laughs> I'm so sorry I did that to you. <laughs> I, I don't want to use my platform to inspire people to breed an already overbred species of reptile. Now my ideology is I want to inspire people to build, you know, stuff like this stuff like this stuff like that really cool cages doing the best that they can for the animals they keep instead of just trying to get more and more animals to breed is kind of the, the thing we're moving in the right direction I, I get a lot of messages people showing me their bioactive enclosures they're doing this you know you inspired me i'm going to build cages like this now and that's fucking awesome to hear man. i absolutely love that i don't I'm glad we're getting there. And this is just the beginning of Project Jungle. I have a lot of ideas, and now that we're scaling this bioactive expansion to a pretty sizable level, and if it continues scaling and growing the way that it is right now, we'll be definitely making some really, um, we'll get into that a little bit later. A lot of big changes when it comes to our breeding projects that I really want to focus more on the passion side of things and getting captive populations up in the hobby for animals that either aren't super well known or aren't really known at all. Some stuff I'm looking at that I didn't even know existed till last week. So now I'm researching everything I can about them to start breeding them and get those captive populations going. Like that, I'm really excited for the future, you know? As someone with as many problems as me, I, for the longest time, did not have high hopes for the future. And this is the, this is the first time in a long time where I'm, I'm pretty fucking excited about it, you know? As an, as an emo kid that grew up, obviously, I didn't really... Life was not too much of a thing I took very seriously. But, you know, at this point in time, I'm kind of like, you know what, homie? I'm gonna stick around for a little bit. There, there's some exciting stuff going on. Maybe, maybe it's okay. Maybe I'll hang on a couple more years. <laughs> in order to get, you know, this bio project where it is today, I, I sacrificed a lot. Everything I was doing for these past months was about this expansion. How to do better for the animals. How to get this product in. I want to get this for this. We're gonna do this. It's all I thought about, and it's all I did for a very, <laughs> for a very long time. Some of you guys know I'm not the uh, healthiest of men. <laughs> I got quite a quite a few chronic things both mentally, but also physically. I won't get too too personal into it mainly because I don't really want to and secondly because I well I kind of <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what it is. I stopped running tests and trying to figure stuff out because it got too expensive and uh, you know years back I ended up quitting my job that had health insurance in order to pursue this dream of Dakota Blue Exotics. Now doing that and all the work that I've been doing kind of neglecting other parts of my life that is not the best um well it's caught up to me <laughs> it's it's not great unfortunately i mean this thing's been you know like i said years and years it's been going on and i've been neglecting it and putting it aside for years and years trying to grow this business into something of a little bit of a reputation a little bit of a legacy if you will and that has finally gotten to the point where i can i can no longer do that um <laughs> I mean, I can't do anything. I can't go out anywhere. I'm, I'm basically house prisoned. I'm like just a little bit at a time. Like there's less and less things I can do. And now it's the point where most recently I, I can't vend shows anymore. I, I physically cannot, I'm not well enough to walk and go long distances to shows and be able to sit there for eight hours. I, I can't do it anymore. I really, I, I just, I feel like I can't do anything anymore, and it is um, really sucks. It's not a, it's not a fun feeling. Reference by saying it's it's not life threatening. I'm ninety percent like I, I don't really know what's going on with me, but I'm I'm pretty damn sure it's not life threatening. What are my credentials for stating that? Absolutely nothing. But I, I just don't want people to worry about me. Like, oh my God, is Dakota not going to be here anymore? I'll probably, I'll, pro <laughs> I'll probably still be. I want to be here. Like I said, cool stuff's happening over here. I don't want to miss it. I was always being here for a good time, not a long time. But apparently, the good times happen happening in the long time. So now I got to, I got to get back into the game in order to, well, live. I guess. <laughs> The, the big thing that has come to this point of me realizing that I actually have to take care of myself and not just worry about my business for the whole time and everything's just going to be okay. Apparently you can't just brush it under the rug when it comes to your health and you're good. Uh, it was actually a show I did yesterday. Well, I guess I, I'll say did in quotation marks because basically what I did is got there, immediately felt awful and ended up just fucking lying down in my car for six hours. <laughs> 
It was amazing enough that Casey was there with me and she actually ran the show. My family, I have an awesome family, an awesome support system of people. They kind of like, they see the dream, they see what's going on, what we're building, how the growth is happening, and very supportive, very, very awesome family. A plus family, I would say. Uh, my mom and sister were kind enough to drive up an hour up to this dairy show and uh, actually help her out with the table, so. If you guys were in uh, Derry, New Hampshire, you saw me till about 9.15 and then you saw my family and girlfriend <laughs> doing the table until about like, I think it was like 2 or 2.30 in the afternoon where I finally was like, I didn't feel better. But the, the problem with this is, this happened last show as well. It was like 1, I think, and all of a sudden, like, I'm just, I'm fucked. I'm throwing up in the bathroom. I just a lot of shit and i'm like i gotta go dude and it was the same vendor or the same um yeah not vendor uh promoter so I, I i couldn't do this fucking twice to him so i'm like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna lay in my car if casey and everyone else but family can come up and run the show for me i'm not gonna do this to this guy two times in a row and i love going to shows i love talking to people i love fans coming up taking pictures i love shooting the shit with my friends that i never see because we're all introverted gecko keepers and we really only see each other at show i was so pissed off that all i could do was just lay in a car so it was around like 2 30 i was like i'm getting the fuck up dude i don't care how awful i feel i'm, I'm getting up there i'm gonna talk to some people because i i can't just i'm not just gonna sit here the whole show so 9 15 you might have saw me i think someone was talking to me and i'm like i'm like yeah uh, yeah springtails yeah and you can get... and then too i come in and i'm like wearing my jacket even though it's really warm in the show and i'm like how's it going guys i'm like yeah i was like yeah man i just got these eggs it's really nice it's just uh i know there's some people that saw me at the show and everyone's like you good homie i'm like nah no, I'm not good. <laughs> Come to the point I've realized I've, I've been working myself too hard and I've been pushing myself too hard trying to make this work and it is working. If fruits of my labor are coming to fruition, this is a point. We still got a little bit ways to go. I'm able to make money where I have extra money. I can pay off stuff for animals that have been on hold forever that can finally get over here. I can pay off some stuff to get other stuff in, get some expansions for the bio stuff. We're, we're starting to make money, which is absolutely amazing. But unfortunately, it's gotten to the point where I... I can't keep pushing myself the way I've been pushing myself. So we have to, um, number one, we got to take a hiatus. I, I, I can't do shows anymore. And until I figure out A, what's going on, and B, how to fix it, I, I'm not well enough to get to shows. I mean, by God, if Casey wasn't there, I'd be, I would have been fucked, dude. Absolutely amazing. Gave him a shout out on my Instagram. I got, um, I got, Em was there at the show. I got her to take pictures of my table with my family because I was really proud and happy that I got a support system like this. So, yeah, that was, uh, the dairy show was the last one we were going to be at for, for a while. It really sucks. I mean, not just the money aspect because shows are great for money, especially when you're doing this full time, getting a revenue stream cut from you uh, isn't good. It's not a fun thing. And it's also like the biggest social event that I do. So having both of those things taken away, I guess that one thing that equals those both things taken away is, um, is shitty. And I think it's enough of a reason for me to finally like sit down and figure out what the fuck is going on and make some changes to my lifestyle to help. I, I gotta find a balancing point. I can't. Right now, the weight's all the way at, like, building this thing. I, I gotta I gotta let go of some stuff in order to set the scales where I'm not, like, dying when I leave my house. Why am I, why am I telling you guys any of this? Number one, I'm out of content ideas. But number two, more importantly, I had a big cool little like surprise thing I was gonna do at Florifauna um but I can't go to Florifauna anymore so I'm just going to put it here on the YouTube video bonus people <laughs> for the people that stuck around I don't know like 15 minutes into this video Ooh, cool surprise that uh you guys get a little insight on that probably no one else will see because I didn't watch the whole video to now it has to do with these little dudes right here my crested gecko project the longest project that I've been doing well since founding Dakota Blue Exotics I've been bringing these guys for about five six I don't know how many it's been a long time I've been bringing these guys and we've amassed uh, quite the collection of them. However, at this point in time with Project Jungle, I no longer feel like I need to produce 
300 of these things. <laughs> there's just, there's no reason, man. Other people are doing it. People that have nicer animals than me are doing it. People that are doing it with more animals. Um, it's just not something that I need to do. And it's with that being said that I just don't really need this many crested geckos. I'm not gonna get rid of all of them, but I'm, I'm gonna get rid of most of them. People like, animals like Cookie here, I've had Cookie for a long time. I mean, some of these animals I've had for almost, cause some of these crested geckos I've had for almost 10 years now, um, these guys are gonna stay. Well, Cookie's not the best looking Dalmatian. Uh, I just have too much of like a sentimental attachment to her. Plus she's like a good ambassador animal. She's just chills and look how fucking fat she is. <laughs> living the good life over here and she will live the rest of her good life um, here as well. That being said, though, most of these crested geckos are going to be sold. I think, hang on, let me do math real quick. Math completed. I think I'm keeping 10 geckos that are going to be like my all-stars, either morphs I've just spent ridiculous money on that I want to actually produce stuff from and make combos with, or just Dalmatians that are just too good. Like, I, I want to continue projects like that and really honing them. The deal with the Crested Gecko project now is it needs to be 10 out of 10 perfect. I need to be up there. I need to, each gecko should be certified the gold standard gecko club, which is Tiki's new AKC thing with geckos. If it, if it don't look like that, or if it's not something like Cookie, it's not going to stay here. So we are going to have a lot of ready to breed geckos, a lot of adults, a lot of females and um, paired stuff that might actually produce eggs if you buy them because I paired everything. And now I've come to this realization that I don't want to, do that many geckos for cresteds anymore <laughs> stuff and then we'll also we have a bunch of holdbacks I, i'll keep like um i think i'm keeping like six holdbacks and the rest down there i'll also be selling so we'll have like i don't know 30 crested geckos on the site now the idea behind this is we are going to use the funds that we are going to amass from dissolving most of the crested gecko project into just more stuff i need to get back my toke game there's so many new morphs that have come out recently into the united states and i need to get those and continue my projects and my combos i've been doing with toke so what we're actually going to do is <laughs> We're going to be dismantling this, getting another four stack of two by twos for tokes and... And most of this is gonna be moved. As you guys know, you know, Rex, our first bearded dragon, fortunately passed at the age of like 12 or so. Um, that was a long time ago now. Well, not a long time, but it's it's been a little bit and I, I'm not gonna get another bearded dragon. It's just, uh, not, at least not right now, I just can't do it. So Rex's cation go down. Viv, I think I'm going to build a stand by the Tegu tent and put Viv on top of there and get rid of this 4x2 and then we're going to get other 2x2s for more Toke geckos as well. And lychees, because I want more lychees as well. Lychees are cool. Also be using those funds to start up some Europlatus projects and red-eyed crocodile skink projects. I want to get back into those species. I think red-eyed crocodile skinks really need their captive populations up and even though we will only do it about one at a time, I mean, that's one more than anyone else is doing. You know, the game plan, man. Um, it's supposed to be this big thing. It was like this big unveiling at Flora. I had this whole idea, but I, I just can't do that anymore. I feel awful not going to Flora. Um, it was a great time last time, and now I am not, and it sucks. Man, that's my uh, that's my spiel. I can't get rid of those. Look at, look at this. Look, wait, wait. What are those, what are those things? Oh, sorry, sorry. What? What? You know what? No more token. <laughs> That's my spiel. Don't get too excited. They're not going to be for sale yet. I'm going to wait till the weather warms up. I hate shipping geckos when it's like this weird time of like kind of cold, but using a heat pack can be risky. I just don't want to deal with it. So like, well, probably May when flora fauna was, was, is when I'll do it. As soon as the temps warm up enough where I feel more comfortable, uh, we'll start listing those guys. Obviously, Patreon members are going to be able to see them first. So join Patreon if you want to see that and help me. <laughs> Yeah, man, just a uh, just a little one on one, a little shareholders meet. I swear to God, a shareholders meeting on the Dakota Blue Exotics channel, a little life update. I do these every now and then, maybe like a couple times a year, a few times a year. Um, that's the thing. I'll get better. I just I got to focus on that. I got to put that ahead. You'll probably actually see more social media stuff now because <laughs> that's kind of like all I have to do is just take care of animals and I need to figure out the social stuff to keep revenue afloat now that shows are no longer a thing for a little bit. But anyway, thank you for taking the time of your day to uh, follow us to Cold Blue Exotics. 
I'll see you guys later. Until next time. Goodbye.